all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so this study is the first ever study to show trace amounts of messenger rna mrna present in the human breast milk after vaccination with either moderna or with pfizer vaccine so it actually blows my mind because the travel of mrna all the way from injection site to the breast milk has many barriers and so trace amount or not how did it end up there is a very interesting question i cannot show you the whole paper because it is behind a paywall and if i show it then i would be uh, breaching their copyright and they can actually get the video down so i'm going to show you those parts that they <coughs> excuse me i'm going to show you those parts that they have actually openly shown in their um, advertisement of it i would call it advertisement because once you go, follow the link and go and open it, it it says give us money so let's start and i'm going to draw some mechanisms that they they are the authors are postulating and explain how do they think mrna ended up in the breast milk so there are some very interesting questions what does it mean that it is in the breast milk so once the child has taken it what happens there in, inside the child why did it end up in the breast milk breast milk is actually produced by a barrier and it is separated from the from the remaining uh, circulatory system how did that whole thing whole barrier was crossed then why was mrna circulating out so all these are interesting questions and there is a mechanism that i'm going to explain so let's start so starting from here this is drbean.com there are 900 more than 900 lectures of this kind on dr bean there is premium content there and there is a link in the description with such a low price that you would not believe it and it is only one time fee all right so i'm going to quickly show it to you this is i am actually signed in so this is the detection of messenger rna covid-19 vaccine in human breast milk i have intentionally not make it much larger for reading so please um spare me and don't zoom it so here is the jama pediatrics they tweeted trace amounts of covid-19 vaccine mrna were detected in the breast milk of some lactating women caution is warranted regarding breastfeeding infants younger, younger than 6 months in the first 2 days after maternal covid-19 vaccination and because they have shown this table here i guess i can show that here as well so it is a small study if you can see there are 11 participants here and there are the maternal age race and ethnicity mode of delivery gestational age of at the time of delivery vaccine timing after the delivery i think this is an important column here why because if you look at their method and once again i'm just going to show a part of the method if you look at their method in their method they say this cohort study was conducted from february to october 2020 so it is so the vaccine started in december of 2020 right so actually 2020 yes so about december of 2020 so of course in february of 2020 there were no vaccines so my suspicion is that these are the times where they were collecting the breast milk or they had included these individuals who were pregnant at this time so anyways there is some more explanation for this february to october 2020 and so i think what is important is then to be able to understand the 
weeks after the delivery when the mother was given the vaccination, for example, 10 weeks is almost two and a half months. So maybe somebody delivered in October and then two and a half months later they were vaccinated. It's And if it is a typo, then that would be strange because it is an reviewed and accepted article. If you, if I am missing something, please let me know. So regardless of this one thing, I'm going to share what they are saying. So I have the PDF open on my other screen deliberately. So my apologies for this. Here is what they said. They said, vaccination is a cornerstone in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the initial messenger RNA vaccine clinical trials excluded several vulnerable groups, including young children and lactating individuals. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration deferred the decision to authorize COVID-19 mRNA vaccine for infants younger than six months. Until more data are available because of the potential priming of the children's immune response that may alter their immunity. This is a very important point, that if a child is given a vaccine early on, we have to be really sure that the vaccine will not cause, as they call it, priming. They will not create memory cells and they would not create the original antigenic sin-like phenomena and it would have the vaccine would have the correct effect if at all so because of that or lack of the data vaccine was not offered to the younger children then they say the centers for disease control and prevention recommend offering the covid vaccine to breastfeeding individuals Although the possible passage of vaccine mRNA in breast milk resulting in infant's exposure at younger than six months was not investigated. This study investigated whether the COVID-19 vaccine mRNA can be detected in the expressed breast milk. So in their manuscript, it's just two pages. EBM is the expressed breast milk. Of lactating individuals receiving the vaccination within six months after delivery. So somebody delivered, I think their February to October is the delivery time. And then they receive the vaccine afterwards. Why did they choose six months? Because the child's immune system is still developing in the first six months. And child is actually banking on the protection through the IgG that mother has given to the child through placenta. So with this, what they did was, quick method discussion, what they did was they had 11 women. They These women, when they received the vaccine, they had given their milk before the vaccination. Then once they were vaccinated, five of them were the Moderna and six of them had Pfizer. And they were asked to collect their breast milk, freeze it, Till it was picked up and they collected one hour to five days after vaccine administration. And they found that messenger RNA was detectable for two days after the vaccination. The amount, when they say trace amount, they were able to detect their test kit was sensitive enough and specific enough that it was able to detect from 0.5 picogram per milliliter to 100,000 picogram per milliliter. And they saw the range of the mRNA within this range. That is why they called it trace amount. The other thing that is interesting is the following. They said of 11 lactating individuals, let me go here for a second. Of 11 lactating individuals enrolled, trace amounts of BioNTech and Pfizer were detected in seven samples from five different participants at various times 
up to 45 hours post vaccination. So out of 11, five. And this is why you, you saw the word sum. If it was above 50%, they would have used most. If it was below 50%, they could use some. So it is almost there, right? 5 out of 11, just below 50%. Now with this, and it blows my mind that this happened, I'm going to share the mechanism that they think. The vaccine mRNA appears in higher concentrations in the EVs than in the whole breast milk. So now let's look at <coughs> what their actual observation is. And excuse me for my cough. So I'm going to draw some things for you. So as you know, these are our little gifts for humanity. And they're continuing. I hope that... Um, because I did not pre-prepare it, so you're going to see my raw drawing skill. My apologies for that. This actually, in my mind, breaks all the concepts of mRNA not crossing various barriers. So let's see. <clears throat> what happens is, let's say this is the deltoid muscle. In this muscle, the vaccine is injected. So when the vaccine is injected, what happens is there are lipid nanoparticles, correct? This is a cell. This is a cell. These are lipid nanoparticles that are part of the vaccine. So let's say we are zooming in and these lipid nanoparticles contain mRNA. Good. NK says, nutritional ketosis resources. Thanks for this critical information. You're very welcome. And I am actually shocked that they did not make it free as so many other studies are because this is the information that should be free for everyone. And if they want to charge someone, they should go charge the vaccine companies or others. This was an important piece of information. Anyways, here is the lipid nanoparticle. In there is the messenger RNA. The first question in your mind will be, maybe this nanoparticle tra traveled all the way to the breast milk. And they found that to not be true. They found the mRNA in EVs, extracellular vesicles, and I will discuss that in a second. But they did not find the lipid nanoparticle itself. So then how did the mRNA end up there? Here is their conjecture. I had actually discussed this one and a half year ago, a Swedish study about the possibility of the mRNA traveling from one cell to another through the EVs was discussed. And I still remember I got so much heat, not in even me, the authors emailed me and they said that there was some they, one, they thanked me that I talked about it. And then I think they were they received a lot of uh, reaction as well. So here is the lipid nanoparticle. Lip, lipid nanoparticle enters, should be made in red. Let's say it enters the cell. And then it releases the messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is then used locally to make spike protein through the ribosomes and then the spike proteins are shredded and presented on the cell surface. This messenger RNA, this messenger RNA inside the cell gets packaged up in a vesicle. Vesicles are small pockets within the cell. It gets packaged up within the cell and then it can get out. So you can call this as Give me one second. I have to open the door for Kyrie. She's otherwise she's gonna keep scratching the door. One second. Apologies. <clears throat> so tech ad sir says, what is EV? 
So I'm going to discuss, that is exactly what I'm discussing. So this little packaging that is done within the cell, imagine the cell has repackaged the messenger RNA. It has taken it out of LNP, lipid nanoparticle, and then used it inside. Some of that RNA is actually gotten repackaged. This repackaged RNA is a vesicle. Vesicle is any pocket inside the cell. Now, <clears throat> important thing, imagine this little thing in my hand. I have this little monster-like cartoon sitting with me. So imagine within the cell, this little vesicle pocket contains inside of it the messenger RNA. That little, one second, going back to the drawing, that little pocket, because it is wrapped, it is a vesicle, it can actually get out of the cell. Why? Because it is also wrapped in lipids. Just like lipid nanoparticle could come in, this lipid nanoparticle could go out. Although we don't call it lipid nanoparticle, we call it extracellular, extracellular, my apology, I did not prepare before, vesicle or EV. It's not electronic vehicle, it is a lipid vehicle. This EV was supposed to be a theory. EV present, yes, we know that. EV carrying some content out of the cell, yes, we know that too. I actually discussed two studies that both got me so much heat. One of that was the Swedish study where they said EV could be taking the uh, even spike protein from one cell to the other. The other study was that there was a study that showed, I think that was a US study, that showed that the EV with the spike proteins exited from these cells and went out and circulated in the blood. Both of these studies got me a lot of heat. If California law had been passed, they would have done something to me already. So anyways, this EV comes out now. And inside of it is the messenger RNA. Now, how does it enter in the blood? Remember, we had done this discussion many times. It is not supposed to enter a blood stream. So authors grappled with the same mechanism as well. So this whole thing is their conjecture. They Now they can prove that you give it in the muscle and you find it in the milk. What is the What happened between these two points is still a conjecture. So their conjecture is that either this EV entered the local bloodstream. Remember I discussed it that it is possible that there is local inflammation that causes the local blood vessels to be dilated and through which things can come in and out. Those that normally are not able to cross the blood barrier or the blood vascular layers. So this is one possibility. The second possibility is lymphatic channel. So we know that in every tissue, we have lymphatic channels that bring the lymph to lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes eventually bring that content back in the blood. What happens is lymphatic channels exist because they collect those parts or those pieces in our tissues, microscopic but still larger pieces in the tissue that cannot enter blood vessels. These can get swept up in the lymphatic channels and then filtered out here and then the remaining go back in the blood. So they think that either it is direct entry in the blood or through the lymphatics eventually reaching the blood. So those who may say that it's Mubin just talking about it. Let me just quickly read a part of their conjecture. They say, we speculate that following the vaccine administration, lipid nanoparticles containing the vaccine mRNA are carried to memory glands via hemato hematogen hematogenous and or lymphatic routes. 
Furthermore, we speculate that the vaccine mRNA released into memory cell cytosol can be recruited into developing EVs that are later carried. Okay, so let me correct one mechanism that I misspoke according to their conjecture. They are saying that it is possible that this LNP directly entered blood or lymphatics. I am adding this as well. Okay, so now we have the lipid nanoparticles eventually in the blood. From there, let's say, here is the breast tissue. Eventually, sorry for the slightly, I do not know how to draw very good breasts, so don't mind. So here, now the bl blood circulation is here the lipid nanoparticle comes out and now it is here with the messenger rna now the second problem is blood cannot just directly come out in the in the milk otherwise the women would only have blo blood in their milk so what happens is now there are cells again here that kind of on one end are dipped in blood is not a scientific term it's just me trying to simplify it so on one end of them is the blood circulation system on the other end are the milk canaliculi these are the little tube microscopic tubules that would all come and open at the nipple and milk will be expressed from these right so this lipid nanoparticle enters this cell. Now, from this cell, mRNA gets out through EV. It does not get out through the LNP. That is for sure. So now it is repackaged, as I said before, and it is brought out in the milk. From here, of course, now it comes out in the milk and goes to the baby. This is what they found so let me delete this part because this is not their conjecture i can actually even think that this would be happening too so here we are lipid nanoparticle some of them have escaped in the blood either in the circulation directly or through the lymphatics they come to the breast tissue in the breast tissue they enter the breast cells from there the mrna is unpackaged then repackaged in the EVs, and those EVs then appear in the milk. Now, <clears throat> two days after, there were no mRNA, or at least they didn't detect them, and their point is that that mRNA may have been destroyed. So, let me just read their last part, and then we stop. Then they say the limitation of the study include the relatively small sample size and the lack of functional studies demonstrating whether detected M vaccine mRNA is translationally active. Also, we did not test the possible cumulative vaccine mRNA exposure after frequent breastfeeding in infants. So they say that now that a child is breastfeeding and they are breastfeeding again and again within this 48 hours, will they how much of the mrna would end up in them is not calculated so this is the discussion first time ever and they say it it's not me being hyperbolic they say it first they say these data demonstrate for the first time to our knowledge the biodistribution of COVID-19 vaccine mRNA to memory cells and the potential ability of tissue extracellular vesicles or EVs to package the vaccine mRNA that can be transported to distant cells. This, for me today, became a reality because in my previous discussions, this was more of a theory. I even remember that one time Dr. Paul Merrick and I discussed 
there this concept of shedding spike protein so maybe there was a possibility and this is a conjecture which we discussed of course now we cannot discuss these things in california because california would come back if it is signed the the law so we discussed that if the spike protein can be seen in the ev or if the mrna can be seen in the evs is there a possibility that the spike or the messenger rna ends up under the skin in the circulation then just like here in the breast milk it ends up in the sweat glands where it is packaged in the ev then ev is released with the sweat and if that is sufficient quantity it can then shed from the skin so we did we did a lot of research to see if any ev containing any proteins from circulation were ever found in the sweat so sweat has evs because every cell makes evs and can uh, move them out but do we have this barrier translation from circulation to surface and we couldn't find any study so even when we had this same mechanism in our thought we couldn't find any study to even make a speculation that this or even confirm a little more of the speculation this will be the first study that would that would tell me that from blood so there are a couple of jumps here from the muscle to the blood first jump from the blood to some secretory cell that if it can be in the milk cells it can be in the saliva cells it could be in the sweat cells as well i do not know there are no studies for that but if it can cross from the circulation into a secretory cell a cell that secretes something and then become part of the secretion through ev then this could happen at all secretion barriers so that is the that is the interesting part for me yes of course if it is being secreted then it that would mean it would be at every secretion eyes nose mouth vagina git skin surface and if the quantity is reasonable it could then be moved out as well but i'll keep saying there is no study that shows that and when i am talking even after this study i am making a conjecture so i could be totally incorrect 100% incorrect the only proof through this study is the presence of mrna through an ev in the breast milk so this is the discussion and if at the end i can request you to to look at the description of this video there is a link for dr bean one time payment and actually it is refundable payment if you don't like it you can get your refund plus there are other links in the description as well my work has now been primarily supported by you all so it is not a necessary support this work has been a gift and it has been free but if you would like to support this work there are links in the description you can buy me a coffee you can use paypal you can become a 5 dollar per month patreon member or you can become member of dr bean youtube channel and so on so let's close i'm just going to see if there is any question and then we stop so robin says not doing a crazy thought sorry just wondering how infiltrate 
infiltrated Dr. B thinks is into other tissues. If mRNA could reach breast tissue, enter the cells, <coughs> excuse me, enter the cells, become packaged in EVs, come out in the secretion, then it could actually do that for almost every tissue it would go to. Because the LNP is trained or it is structured in a way to enter a cell. So if it can be found here, then it can be found in other tissues as well. That is a big shock. So the only thing I'm going to be hanging on to now is the trace amounts. The question still is in my head, trace amount is found in the EV side, on the milk side. But how, what was the quantity in the cell out of which some of it got packaged? And what was the quantity in the circulation out of which some entered the breast cells? That is still, it's not a one-to-one. -one. There has to be a higher quantity in the circulation out of which some will go in the breast tissue because the distribution is going to occur throughout the body. I never thought I'll say these words. D distribution will have to occur throughout the body. So every cell is going to pick up something. And so this would enter, some part of it would enter breast tissue. Then every single RNA that is in the breast tissue is not going to become packaged and re released. It's actually going to make spike proteins over there if it is if it is a viable RNA. And they say we do not know if it is viable or not. So some of that is going to, if it is viable, then that is going to make spike proteins there. The A smaller part will become packaged and come out. So even when we say that within the breast milk, the amount is trace amount, there is going to be a larger quantity in this breast tissue cells and still a larger quantity in the circulation and of course still a larger quantity in the tissue where it is injected. Tech Adser says, is it just mRNA in the EV or the whole LNP in the EV? Just the mRNA. Because it is opened up, then repackaged. Now, this is also not known what happens to the child. The I think they make a good case. They say that, hey, FDA and CDC said don't give it to, don't administer this to children. So now children under six months. But here we have mRNA getting into them through mother's breast milk. So how much quantity and what is the outcome is also not known. So they say we believe it's safe to breastfeed after maternal COVID-19 vaccination. Well, that's a belief as well, because now we are seeing some things happening. However, caution is warranted about breastfeeding children younger than six months in the first 48 hours after maternal vaccination until more safety studies are conducted. In addition, the potential interference of COVID-19 vaccine mRNA with the immune response to multiple routine vaccines given to infants during the first six months of age needs to be considered. It is critical that lactating individuals be included in the future vaccination trials to better evaluate the effect of mRNA vaccines on lactation outcomes. Author Affiliations Division of Neonatology, Department of Pediatrics, New York University, Langone Hospital, Long Island, NYU, Long Island School of Medicine. So that is the discussion. Nixie says, any studies of LNP expressed in the milk? So they looked at the mRNA. May that be packaged in the LNP or EV? They found it to be in the EV. So <clears throat> Wapa Bameers says, blood brain barrier, blood testicular barrier. So look, the reason I try to stay cautious of not extrapolating 
although if you ask me i could extrapolate the problem is i try to stay true to the study and as much as to the study so that when somebody challenges it they can at least see that this i'm speaking what is in the study if i make a conjecture i can do that but then i would say this this is a conjecture this is not pre present in this study and it is also an opinion contrary to my own previous opinions and that was i thought lnp will not end up with the mrna into other tissues and here we can see mrna traveling all the way to the breast milk then it could be in other places as well and breast milk has a barrier and so if it can cross that barrier then of course the nature of every barrier is different it is not one to one that the breast barrier breast milk barrier is the same as the blood brain barrier but these are all barriers which barriers can it cross i still cannot say but here is an example of a barrier crossed jlb says mrna spike from original virus is not worse than micron spike protein from so the the question is not about the spike itself worst or not worst question is about the mechanisms and the safety because when we are infected with the virus we are now a sitting duck we don't have a contract with the virus to say don't hurt us this way or don't hurt us that way but the drugs that we make we can be careful about them these are not infections we are not making them to say this should be as bad as the viruses so if they are in a similar vein then it is important to relook at the design or have uh, caution okay so this is it please like subscribe and share um plus there are links in the description if you would like to support this work thank you very much we shall see if my channel stays up and if the video stays up but i stayed within the framework of the study and presented it this is the very first time ever we are discussing it very very different from where we are coming so james says so we are all screwed i want to address this the the way i have always worked and you could disagree and say wrong is to look at the empirical evidence and mechanistic evidence so for example unknowingly or knowingly i think unknowingly they encouraged vaccination and they did not stop from breast milk feeding for mothers that means there are going to be a lot of children who in that 48 hours were being breastfed question is how were they doing clinically that is an important one i don't have the answer for that but i don't think the answer is yes to your uh, thought so thank you very much i might come back if i could prepare another talk otherwise we'll see each other tomorrow if the channel stays up bye bye for now <laughs>